Hi there guys, how are we doing? This is your friend and tutor Manas and guys in today's session we're going to be talking about interpenetration of solids. To be very precise, let me tell you, you're going to see a horizontal cylinder taking on a vertical cylinder or you can also say a horizontal cylinder penetrating a vertical cylinder. So let's see what the problem has in store. Here we go. Well, it goes like this. A vertical cylinder of 80 mm diameter is completely penetrated by another cylinder of 60 mm diameter. Their axis bisecting each other at right angles. Draw their projections showing curves of penetration. Assuming the axis of the penetrating cylinder to be parallel to the VP. Assume suitable lengths for the cylinders. Alright, so there are two objects. One is a vertical cylinder whereas the other one is a horizontal cylinder. Okay, now the lengths of these two cylinders, I'm going to assume it to be equal to 120 millimeters. You can note that down because that is something that I'm going to be using in my drawing. All right. Now the condition is the, the axis of the penetrating cylinder is parallel to the VP. Okay, so anything which is parallel to VP, you can say that its top view is going to be parallel to the XY line. All right. Now guys, I have divided this entire solution into different parts. Part one is going to be all about analyzing the virtual CAD model and I'm going to be showing you what that curve of penetration means. Okay. And in the second phase or in the second part rather, we're going to draw, you're going to see the orthographic projection of these two penetrating cylinders. All right. So let's see how all of that unfolds. So guys, this basically is the virtual CAD model of the entire scenario. You can clearly see a horizontal cylinder penetrating this vertical cylinder. Now this horizontal cylinder is having uh, the base diameter of 60 millimeters, whereas this vertical cylinder is having a base diameter of 80 millimeters. Now, when you try to look at this scenario from the front, you're going to see this. And this over here is the curve of penetration. Okay, the intersection between this vertical cylinder and this horizontal cylinder. Okay, the main challenge as far as this orthographic prediction is concerned is regarding this curve of penetration and this is something that we're going to focus on okay and when you try to look at this entire scenario from the top this is exactly what you're going to see okay this is the uh, axis of uh, what you call the horizontal cylinder this is the axis of vertical cylinder both of them are bisecting each other and this was the top view and when you try to look at this from the side it's going to look something like this this is the left hand side view to be very precise now guys you can see that this is the curve of penetration and i'm going to be positioning points over here in the form of say p1 p2 p3 and so on now let us say we have point p1 over here and let us say we have point p2 when you try to look at both these two points from the left hand side they're going to appear as if they lie on the periphery of a circle please watch this okay it appears as if p1 is over here okay on the periphery of the circle and p3 is over here although they are not so we're going to be doing all the stuff you guys can uh, do that on autocad you guys can do that on a drawing sheet I'm going to be showing you how all of this stuff can be carried out with the help of a PowerPoint presentation. So let's see how that works out. All right, let's begin with part number two by drawing the orthographic prediction of this entire arrangement. So in order to do this, I'm going to be drawing two lines, okay, something like this. And this portion is what you call the vertical plane. And over here, we have the horizontal plane. And this is the profile plane onto which basically what you call a side view is going to be made. All right, let's go in and initially create the front top and side views of this vertical cylinder. Now guys, just think about this. This is the vertical cylinder. Okay. Now from where can you see the true shape of its base? Now, one thing is for sure that the base's true shape can only be seen from the top. And hence, we're going to begin by making the top view first. Okay. Now this circle is having a diameter of 80 millimeters. All right. We'll now proceed by making the front view and it's going to look something like this. Okay, now this much height I've assumed to be equal to 120 millimeters and this width is obviously the, equal to the diameter that is 80 millimeters. Fine, uh, let's go ahead and create the left hand side view. It's going to look something like this. Let us rotate that about this center. Okay, and let's uh, let me get a vertical line in this direction. Let me get a horizontal line and this intersection. Okay, this rectangle in fact is again what you call the side view. All right, so the front top and side view of this vertical cylinder is over. We'll now go ahead and create the projections that is front top and side again of this horizontal cylinder. Fine. For that, you need to think from where can you see the true shape of the space of this horizontal cylinder, obviously. Now, one thing is for sure that the true shape of this space 
circular base in fact can only be seen from the side from this side that is from the left hand side all right so what i'm going to be doing is very specifically i'm going to be placing a point this is the center exactly at the center of this line okay i'll place a point and with this guy as the center and with a diameter of 60 millimeters that is equal to that of this horizontal cylinder i'm going to be making a circle all right let me get rid of this point okay i've divided this circle into eight equal parts and now with the help of this side view i'm going to create the top view of this horizontal cylinder and it's going to look something like this okay project all these points with the help of these lines in the vertical uh, downward direction and then rotate them about this point okay in the clockwise sense and then bring all the points towards the left hand side of this top view okay and you can see from here to here okay the distance again i've assumed it to be equal to or the length to be equal to 120 millimeters so if you consider this to be the mid plane towards the right of a mid plane you're going to go 60 steps and towards the left of this mid plane you're going to go again 60 steps so 60 towards the right 60 towards the left and that's the rectangle that you're going to get which is having the entire length as 120 millimeters fine so the side view and top is done now in the next step we're going to go ahead and make the front view of the cylinder it's damn easy it's going to look something like this right exactly at the center fine something like this all right so this is going to be 120 and this is obviously equal to from here to here and this is 60 millimeters i suppose yeah done now what shall be done now we are going to focus on this curve of penetration and that is uh, our main focus of attention fine so how can that be done okay guys so please have a careful look at this please see where the mouse is hovering this portion can you see this curve of penetration now this point corresponds to point p1 okay and when you try to look at this entire scenario from the left hand side it this curve of penetration would appear as a circle from the left hand side view okay so hence this point p1 is going to appear here and there is going to be a point p2 over here it's going to be lying here this is p3 this is going to be p3 over here p4 p5 p6 p7 and this is going to be p8 fine that's it just like we had all the points in the form of p over here over to this side of this curve of penetration uh, similarly you're going to have one more curve of penetration at the back also over here and in the form of q so behind p1 you're going to have q1 behind p7 you have q7 behind p3 you have q3 and it's going to look something like this right now these are all the points of penetration okay so they're going to be worked out from this side view over to this top view let us see how that can be done okay so i'm going to be shifting all these points over here so this curve of penetration is for p and this curve of penetration is for q how can that be worked out please watch this carefully we start from looking at this entire scenario from the top you're going to see this point p1 it is far away from the vertical plane from this x y line in fact so this is going to be point p1 now between p1 and p3 you have point p2 over here so if this is p1 this is going to be point p2 okay p1 this is going to be point p2 similarly this is going to be p3 p4 and this is going to be p5 let me write all of them down right okay so but along with this p2 why have i have written p8 and along with this p3 why have i have written p7 there is a specific reason behind this when you try to look at this from the top you're going to see point p3 p3 okay so just below p3 you're going to have point p7 that's why i have written p7 also over here okay similarly you're going to write p2 over here and just below p2 you have point p8 so hence p2 with p8 okay similarly all the points over here to this side also can be worked out in this way that's it it's pretty easy and now the only thing left is to have the curve of penetration in the front view how can that be done well the process is pretty simple you're going to have vertical lines from all these points over to this side something like this and the all the horizontal lines from the side view over to this side fine the intersection of these two lines are going to give you the points of penetration now suppose you want to locate this point p3 so you're going to have two lines one is going to be this one this is the horizontal for p3 and this over here is the vertical for p3 both of them are intersecting here so this is going to be point p3 dash fine now if you want p1 p1 is here please watch this carefully so this horizontal line is for point p1 and where is p1's vertical line so this is p1's vertical line so this is going to be point p1 
Similarly, all the points, eight points are going to be lying here and eight points are going to be lying here. All of them can be worked out by this intersection policy and it's going to look something like this. Okay, all points P over here and all points Q over here. And when you join all of these points, this is the intersection point, this is the intersection point here, here, here. When you join all these points in proper sequence, you're going to get this curve of intersection or what is popularly known as the curve of penetration. Okay, now let me darken the remaining portion. It's going to look something like this. There you go. Okay, the portion of cylinder which is inside, okay, from here to here also has to be given some respect in the form of a hidden line and it should be uh, starting from here, ending here, starting from here, ending here and that's exactly how it looks from here to here, here to here, okay? Similarly, again, there is going to be a hidden line in the top view also. Okay, let me darken this portion. All right, all right, let us go ahead, fine. From P1 to Q1 and just behind P1, we have this P5 from P5 to Q5. Again, this portion also needs to be darkened. That's it, guys. So guys, that was all about how the orthographic prediction of two penetrating cylinders can be prepared, can be constructed rather. I'll be back with more such videos on engineering drawing and some other subjects also. Until then, it's a wrap for today. This is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care, have a great day and keep drawing.